Stadium crammed almost to capacity for this visit of their southern rivals, Reading, and it is indeed heartening and encouraging to see Speedway at least seems to be beating the recession. Coming into heat number one then, there's John Davis, the full heat leader, he'll be in grid two, looking at the lineup from the inside, Steve Gresham on the white helmet colour for Reading on the inside, next to him, John Davis in the red helmet colour, grid three has Jerry Stansel, 11 times ticker to back in champion, and on the outside for the Pirates, it is Kevin Smith wearing the blue helmet colour, four laps to each race, 13 races remember, bikes of 500cc, and here we go for heat one. Home side pool, just seven points in front, seven progressively to Reading's five, and we're moving into heat three, which really does look like an international cocktail because we've got a Czechoslovakian, a Zimbabwean, a Swede, and one British rider. Looking across the grid, we've got Jan Anderson on the inside there. This boy from Sweden and Reading really does hit the traps. A very fast starter, and when he's in front, he's very difficult to catch. He's on the inside. Next to him, in blue, we have Zimbabwean from Paul. That's Peter Prinsloo. Grid three has Tim Hunt in the yellow and black helmet colour. A big money buy for Reading from Ipswich during the winter. And on the outside, Vaslav Ferner, a very rough riding, hard going Czechoslovakian from Prague. So here we go, heat three. Anderson on the inside. Next to him, Prinsloo. Grid three has Hunt. On the outside, it is Ferner. Pull two points up. And we're all set for heat number three. Anderson who goes clear, second place coming around the outside, it is Werner, Werner on the outside of Hunt and at the back it is Prinsley, so this is a little bit better for Reading, they are first and third, Anderson in front, Hunt trying hard, Hunt has third in second place as they tear under our commentary position, the back will really warming up for second place, on the outside now Werner gets around there, he's cleared into second place, third place still is Hunt, trying to make some ground up at the back, we have Prinsley, and uh, this is a bit more like it. Still in front of his Anderson, and now we look back down the line, there's Werner coming, chasing after him, and Prince Lewis making some ground up on punch in third place, and it's happening at the front and at the back, and here comes Werner, around the outside, we have lost Hunt, over sliding there, into the last half, and really, it is all beginning to happen here, in this League Cup match, Hunt's okay, we look up to the corner, still the battle raging, here comes Werner again, chasing hard, trying to find something, don't think he's going to do him, Anderson holds on, three points for him, two for Werner, good hard riding, tough tactics from the Czech, and third place there, Prince Lou, so the Pirates share that one, three to each team, 10-8, that's a progressive total. OK, Tim Hunt, good for Reading, not so good for you, how are you, first of all? I'm just fine, yeah. And what exactly happened, can you talk us through this? Well, uh, I come into the turn, I, I brought in too hard trying to chase the Czech there, and I brought in too hard, and I, I moved out and figuring there was going to be some dirt there, and there's just nothing there at all, it's just... No dirt at all and just spun off, it weren't, couldn't hold it because it weren't the dirt and it was just getting closer to the fence and that's where I went. But you're okay? I'm just fine, I'm going to show them next time. Okay. okay. Heat four then, still 
four, two points in front, 10-8, that's the progressive totals. On the inside, Autry, next to him, Rickard Helson, grid three has Pete Ellums in the blue helmet colour for Poole, and on the outside, John Graham in the yellow and black helmet colour. Heat number four. the lead after four races by 15 points to nine. Halfway through this lead cut fixture and really if the visitors running are to make any impression the revival must be sparked fairly soon. They're 23-13 now. This is heat seven. They've got their top man Jan Anderson there, their captain. This very stylish fast moving Swede. He's on the inside here in the white helmet colour. Next to him Scott Autry. The American star with the Pool Pirates, he's in the red helmet colour, grid two. Grid three has Tim Hunt, there's Autry. Grid three has Tim Hunt in yellow and black. Well, we saw him slide uh, gracefully to earth in his first outing. And on the outside, Pete Ellums, the full reserve in blue. So heat seven with Redding looking for signs of a revival if they did get anything at all from this League Cup clash. Here we go, heat seven. for the visitors Reading who narrow the gap slightly now 25-17 those are the progressive scores well part of the magic of speedway racing is filling in the program it gets a bit complicated but here's some fans making a really studious job of it so two changes for Reading here and Heat 8 on the inside a tactical substitution it is Steve Gresham next to him we have Neil Middleich on the Grid three, we have another change. Denny Pyatt comes in for fellow reserve Alan Graham, and on the outside it is Pete Smith, rather uh, Kevin Smith, for the Pirates. So here we go, he takes with two changes for Reading. And it's getting pretty close up to the corner, and Middle East gets away, and Smith has gone with him. And so this is a surprise for the Pirates. They pull their big guns here, they put in Richard's a tentacle, but it's the Pirate pairing in front and going for their lives. On the outside there, it is Smith, and now we look for Gresham because Gresham's going to find a hole somewhere, and he will not give up trying. Now it's Smith. 
but it is not going to pay dividends. It's the last lap. I think this one could well bring the house down here at Wimborne Road. Fine piece of Team Speedway from Paul Middle. is going to win it. Second place is Smith. Third was a somewhat disillusioned Gresham. Five points to one in favour of the Pirates. 30-18. And they're obviously delighted with that. They held out the very forceful Gresham, and that really puts Paul back in command. Well, the start of Heat 8, there seemed to be an awful lot of elbows flying as they got away. Just watch on the outside there, Smith. They have a nudge there with Pyatt, and Middlech closed the inside line, almost ran Gresham onto the grass. That left the opening for his partner, Smith, around the outside. And once those Pirates got in front, they never looked back. And still the Reading team manager, John Smith, tries to play uh, his tactical substitution game. But this time he brings in Jan Anderson in the yellow and black helmet colour to replace Denny Pyatt. He's on the inside. Anderson unbeaten thus far. He's got Vaslav Werner in with him. He's in grid two. Rickard Halson is in grid three. A disappointing guess for Reading, it must be said. Only one point from two starts. On the outside, Peter Prinsloo for Paul. Here we go for heat number nine with the in front, second place is Werner Werner trying to come round the inside they're all bunching up behind him and there's not much to choose between first and last here, it's Anderson in front, Werner chasing hard, third place it is Prinsley that's the way they line up Anderson now has both the Pirates right on his exhaust pipe, Werner it is in second place third is Prinsley, at the back it is Ricard Nelson, and that's a fine action pitcher as they roar into the third corner dusty out there now, it's been a beautiful day here, and the track beautifully prepared early on, it's now going to get a little bit dry, it's not really hindering the riders, so it's a bit dusty for commentators. It really is a speedy sweet this man Anderson, under a fair bit of pressure early on, contained it all and is now stretching away, he's about 4, 10, 20 lengths perhaps up in front, he's going to have his third successive win, over the line he goes. But the pirate pairing packed behind and Vaslav Werner was second, Prinsloo was third, shared the heat still hanging on to that lead. 33-21, Hall now in front and looking well set. Well, we're moving on into heat 10. Hall very comfortably in front by 12 points, 33-21. But a very interesting individual battle here, I'm sure, in the making between the past and present Reading skippers, both unbeaten, Jan Anderson, they'll be on the inside in the white helmet colour, you can see them there, they're in a shadow boxing almost on the front line, John Davis for Poole, he'll be in the red helmet colour in grid two, grid three has Tim Hunt in yellow and black, and on the outside is Kevin Smith, who's uh, recorded a couple of battling second places in his last two rides, but I'm sure this one is going to be all about the two riders on the inside, Anderson and White, remember, Davis and Red, both unbeaten, great friends, teammates in the Reading Championship side of 1980, here we go, he tends to start, so very, very vital, and then very edgy, Davis nudging the tape, so away this one, John Davis is in, gets away, and they've got a nudge there, and they're in all kinds of trouble up to the first corner, Davis tried to lean on Anderson, got a nudge, got pushed out, and now it's the Reading pairing in front of the referee, Mick Barnes, just having none of that, it looked pretty rough, and a uh, little bit hair raising going up to the first corner and the referee has stopped that not happy at all with the starts and that's uh, predictable so let's have a look at it again as they come in for the restart away they go davis gets away snakes a bit there rears and addison says move over john and davis did awfully well to hang on he almost clipped the back of hunt there how did he avoid the action a really good piece of riding avoiding action but the referee having none of that we're having a restart And down there goes Hunt, and Smith is almost off as well. And, uh, well, it's going to be a bit lively now, and Hunt is down, and he is staying down, and the referee really must stop this. Well, we rather fancied that the kettle was coming to the boil. There is Hunt shaking his head, and I think he might have something interesting to say for himself. Let's look at it again. What did happen again, Davis, seemed to get clear. Again, he reared. Hunt gets away, he gives Smith a knock, they really pile into the corner there, Anderson knocked Davis out of the way, now where is Hunt, Hunt is going down, and really, he went on his own, I can't really see anybody to play, 
given himself for that. And the referee has agreed. Mick Barnes' referee has excluded Tim Hunt as being the cause of the stoppage. I've got to talk to the referee. You're not happy about that? Well, I can't be. If one of them was over me on the inside, the other one was coming across me on the other side. Just hadn't got no room at all. It's crazy. So what do you reckon happened there? Well, I'm going to go and tell the referee. This is crazy. He's just put me head from out of here. So what's your version of what happened? It was a sandwich. Couldn't get through there. Though. One was coming on the other side. They're just getting it up, you know? Do you reckon the protest is going to work? Well, better. You're going to see the referee now, are you? Sure. Tim on here. Yes, well, uh, don't you think that's a bit of a silly decision? Tell the ref exactly the situation. I was going straight into that corner, and I had an elbow on the inside, and then I come across me and elbow me on the inside again. And I had an out of start. They, were, they I was straight out of start, and they come out on the side. And your decision is just, I don't understand it at all. Well, it's got to be all four. The first start was okay. I got over. I was I was knocked about like hell on the first start. Phil, name Yan for the first start. The referee blamed Yan. Well, can you can make it all four at least, surely. I was over by both the riders. You know, I mean, they did. I come out of start Yang. straight, dead straight. You're blind, mate. You need a pair of glasses. What was the verdict then, Tim? They've put me out, that's all they can do. The remaining three riders are... Well, with me here in our commentary position, we have the referee, Mick Barnes, an experienced ACU official. Mick, can you tell us how you saw that Tim Hunt incident? Hunt fell for no reason after Kevin Smith had gone through, so I saw no reason to exclude Smith, and uh, Hunt fell on his own accord. Well, we heard that he was a little bit insulting to you there, Mr. Barnes. Is there any disciplinary action you think about his comments to you about your eyesight? Uh, well, the eyesight problem is always a thing with referees. I, in actual fact, don't wear glasses when I'm viewing it on the track, so I shall stay as I am now. And so he turned... Without Tim Hunt, three starters only, Anderson on the inside, remember, John Davis next to him on the outside, Kevin Smith. So we wonder if it's going to be a close encounter of the third kind. It really has been pretty hectic so far. Anderson and Davis, their rivalry, of course, is intense, so they are great mates off the track. Anderson composed, unflappable Swede. Davis has twice seemed to have got the jump and then run into a little bit of trouble getting up to the 30-yard line. So let's watch Heat 10, the third rerun. And Davis again has gone away. And Davis again has closed the gap on Anderson. He's clear. Anderson is second. Kevin Smith trying to come round the outside. And he just hasn't got the horses. So Davis in front. Anderson is second. Smith is still buzzing around the outside. As Anderson powers under Davis there. the machine as I think they have I think they have touched the bike and that means that he's received outside assistance and their third place I don't think should count here Anderson won the race second was Davis well the controversial issue there was did Kevin Smith receive outside assistance to remount you can see the ambulance men there now track staff men the referee has said okay but a track staff man definitely has touched the machine there now could that be construed as outside assistance well it's a matter for conjecture the referee is happy that uh, smith can claim the point and well we just have to think on about that one but indeed heat uh, 10 has been controversial really from start right until the end to heat 
match 11 as this League Cup match really reaches a climax. Lots of incidents so far in the last couple of races and now Tim Hunt comes in as a tactical substitute. Tim, of course, aggrieved a little and questioning the optical ability of the referee in his last ride and he'll obviously have the needle here coming into heat 11 let's have a look at the lineup on the inside steve gresham has six points a win a second and a third so far next to him neil middle in blue unbeaten with two wins grid three has hunt and on the outside it is scott Autry for paul here we go heat 11 up the League Cup boys, but those first two laps really were something special. Well there's the winner Scott Autry and I'll bet he'll be delighted to see that one again. From my, from my view it's a little bit exciting for me anyway. The opening perhaps and talk us through it as you go will you? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm off of gate four there, and you can see that I just made the start, but I think I was starting to spin up a little bit there, and I got caught behind. Uh, so I'm trying to make my move around Neil there. Found a little bit of grip around Steve, and then all of a sudden it seemed to lock up. Steve got the drive on me. Uh, oh, I got a little bit there. But it was one of those things going in the corner. Steve and I have had quite a few good races before, and I had to back it down a little because I figured I was going to go through the fence. <laughs> Neil comes up underneath me here. Neil, uh, Neil's doing well there, isn't he? Battling well. Yeah, and he gets Steve. And there's almost a little bit of contact there. I'm up back up on the inside again. All three of us together going in, and I just see him get the run going in. So then it's, it's me and Steve right there. And I see uh, Steve did the exact same thing that I did the lap before. He pulls even with me down the back straightaway here. Now he's in a bad position. He's in a position that I was in the, the lap before, and he backs off a little bit early like I did. And from there on out, I think it was pretty much smooth sailing. From there on in it was, yes. yes. And Scott, after some indifferent early season form in the League Cup, you must be delighted with the performance of your team this afternoon. Yeah, I think, I think our team is really forming uh, into a, a championship uh, side, you know. If, we can keep our momentum up i'm sure that people are going to be seeing you know the best of us Scott all three well done to you thank you well it's been a match that really has all the good things in the later stages after a fairly quiet opening we've had some really memorable speedway in the last two or three races and we move into heat 12 and this one too promises to be uh, something extra special because we have another clash between john davis and jan anderson the uh, two top liners from each side, Anderson on the inside, he's in yellow and black. Grid 2 has Peter Prinsloo, has three points so far. Grid 3, the rather disappointed Rickard Helson, only one point from three starts. And John Davis this time on the outside, well away from Anderson. We remember their clashes a couple of races ago when they were together on the inside grids. It's going to be interesting to see what happens here in Heat 12. Paul have the League Cup points in the bag, 40-26 will remind you the progressive score. This is a penultimate race, Heat 12. There's Davis on the outside, and we look across the grid. We've got Helson there, and on the inside it is Jan Anderson. We're watching him. from the outside, Anderson's in second place, third is Prinsloo and Davis made a pitcher start and we wonder if Anderson can possibly find the legs, 
to get up under him like we saw the last time they met. And Davis must close down the inside because that's, I'm sure, is where the attack is going to come from. Now Davis leads it. Anderson's in second place. Third is Prince Lou. And Davis maybe a little bit on this top corner, but he seems to have Anderson well within his grasp at the moment. This is back three. Still Davis, is he going to return the compliment on Anderson? Anderson still buzzing energetically around his back wheel as they go down the back straight. And John really mustn't make a mistake. He mustn't leave a gap because Anderson, I know, will be through like a shot if he gets the opportunity. It's the last lap. It really is a race for the connoisseur. Davis seems to have eyes at the back of his crash and He's counted every move. He's into the last two corners. And I think he might just hold on to uh, return the compliment on his old chum. Over the line, Davis wins it. Second is Anderson. Third was Prince Lou. But it really was a superb speedway race with Davis countering every move. He seemed to know where the attack was going to come from on the inside. He shut that gap and held on for three points. And another four points for Paul with partner Prince Lou taking third place. It means with one race left, it's 44-28. John Davis, I would imagine that particular win over Jan Anderson would have given you a lot of satisfaction, a nice bit of revenge there. Yeah, just really scored my maximum earlier on, so I just uh, reversed the, uh, the, well, the result. One senses there's a, a certain amount of needle between the two of you, is that a fair comment? It's only friendly needle, it's only friendly. Um, we've ridden together for quite a long time now and uh, we just like to beat, beat each other. Because in fact you were teammates of course at Reading. Yeah, we were for uh, three or four years and uh, we always had a lot of rivalry for number one there and um, I think it's good, you know, it gives you someone to pace yourself against. Going well for you and of course going well for the team. Yeah, we wanted to win and uh, we've won and quite an emphatic victory as well, you know, we didn't just win by a couple of points. Well done, we you, John. Them. Well done, mate. <laughs> Thank you. An emphatic victory indeed because Poole won the last heat 4-2 and the match 48-30. Top scoring for the Pirates, Scott Autry and John Davis, both on 11 points for...